So camera shy now almost everywhere, including cooking on the Today Show. We'll show you that at the top of the hour and what that may mean for the future of the Republican Party. Larry? You're right, Anderson. She'll be here tomorrow night. She'll be with Wolf tomorrow. <laughs> Probably be with you Thursday and uh, Cartoon Network on Friday. <laughs> Anderson Cooper at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific with AC 360. Let's discuss uh, the aforementioned uh, governor. Uh, uh, Chris Shays, what do you make of her future in the party? Well, she wasn't ready to be president today, but she will potentially be in four years. But I have to tell you, in my district, uh, she was um, she was not well received. Because of? You know, a variety of things, I think. I think that uh, uh, I had a lot of women who felt if you have a woman, it should be a pro-choice woman, and so they were offended uh, by her politics. And then she didn't do well in one or two of the programs. She did a tremendous job at the uh, convention and then didn't do so well. And then I thought did a very good job in the debate. Michael? You know, Joe Biden made mistakes during the campaign also. I think she did a great job. I mean, let's, let's face it. She was probably the best thing that happened to the McCain ticket. Probably the first time a vice president actually helped the ticket instead of hurting the ticket. But didn't it hurt at the end? No, no she didn't no. hurt at the end. What hurt at the end was John McCain. It always goes to the top of the ticket. That's who heard at the end. When John McCain came back in one of the debates, how he's going to fix the economy by a $30 billion mortgage bailout, that killed him again with the conservatives. She was trying to keep the base together. He kept on blowing the base off. Does she have a chance four years from now? Hey, listen, it's an open field. Everybody could have a chance in four years. Neil Bortz, what do you make of the young lady from Alaska? Well, she's extremely likable, and I think that people will warm up to her. It's... 2012 is going to totally depend on how well she does uh, as governor of Alaska or maybe as a senator from Alaska after they dumped Ted Stevens, a deserved uh, dumping, we might add. But uh, she could well be a star, a real factor in 2012. Amy, the governor was on the Today Show this morning. Here's what she had to say about the leaks and John McCain. Any have you listened to it? some of the leaks that have come out since the election where, the, where they're saying that the McCain people leaked anonymously are saying we couldn't control her. She was a rogue. She didn't want our consultants around her and it, and it became tense. Where do stories like that come from? I honestly do not know because it's not true, Matt. And uh, Senator McCain and I, we have a great relationship. I have nothing but honor and admiration and love for him and for his family. And I think that that is mutual. In fact, I talked to him just today again and uh, we touched touching base nearly every day. Uh, so it's a warm and friendly relationship it, even to this day? Very warm and friendly and professional and um, I, I again I have nothing but honor and admiration and love that I will show for this great American hero. And what's your read on, on the lady? Uh, she was a rogue, charts her own course, doesn't like to be handled. That sounds like John McCain. I think with Sarah Palin uh, in the white hot heat of this general election, she had some sharp edges and they glinted. And among women, she was polarizing because I will tell you, women are harsh critics of other women. And the congressman is right that by being pro-life, that was a huge turnoff to a lot of female voters. But she has four years to prove herself. We saw sassy Sarah, sexy Sarah. Hopefully over the next four years, we'll see smart Sarah as governor of Alaska with you know having to tackle uh, issues like uh, energy uh, energy independence in Alaska and the uh, pipeline the oil pipeline if she has more opportunities to speak to think tanks in Washington for example the Council on Foreign Relations there are a lot of ways that she can showcase her talents and her intelligence mm. as well as the soft mothering cooking nurturing <laughs> side of her uh, that she's been doing the rounds lately we'll be back with our panel right after this don't go away Oh, Michael Reagan wants to chime in on... Well, uh, listen, to Amy and Chris Shays talk about Sarah Palin, and, and both of them brought up the whole thing of she being pro-life. This woman just lived a pro-life life. She sat there and had a child who was Down syndrome. She gave birth to the child. She supports her daughter who's pregnant with the child. You know, to, to take her on and say somehow we have to go another direction. Okay. Ronald Reagan penned a book in 1983 about being pro-life. Only president to pen a book... Well, but, President of the United States. Well, but listen, in a listen, state we're, like we're, Connecticut. Go ahead, Chris. We're not being critical that that's her view. I'm trying to explain how people reacted to it. And they wanted the stereotype that if you were going to be a woman, you had to fit the stereotype. And she didn't fit the stereotype of a lot of women want to see in a candidate. That's my point. Well, there's a lot of women, too. I, I know a lot of pro-life women who supported Sarah Palin because the way the media right. treated her 
because she was a woman. Oh, Neil Bortz, do you, yeah. Neil, hold on, Amy. Neil Bortz, do you think the pro-life aspect will help or hurt her running for national office? I think the Republican Party and their candidate ought to stick to governance. They ought to stick to uh, uh, returning a, a sense of self-reliance into the American people, freedom, economic liberty, and leave matters that are essentially religious to the religious practitioners and not to the politicians. Here, here. Spoken like a true libertarian. Uh, yeah. By the way, she was also on Fox today, Amy, and here's what she told Greta about 2012. God, if, if there is an open door for me somewhere, this is what I always pray. I'm like, don't let me miss the open door. Show me where the open door is. And even if it's cracked up a little bit, man, maybe I'll plow right on through that and maybe prematurely plow through it, but don't let me miss an open door. And if there is an open door in 12 or four years later, um, and if it's something that is going to be good for my family, for my state, for my nation, an opportunity for me, then I'll plow through that door. Amy, is she hearing from God? <laughs> well, I don't know what Sarah Palin and God talk about, uh, but she did add, just add a religious dimension and a plowing dimension to something that Republicans, or, I'm sorry, politicians say all the time, which you know, is, I'm going to keep the opportunity open, but she needs to go back to work to Alaska to work for her constituents. And Abraham listened, Lincoln listened to God. He mentions the Almighty 13 times in the second inaugural address. So I, I think the criticism of her goes to the extreme. She's a gutsy, gutsy courageous woman uh, who was, as, as Amy says, a true maverick. Well, look, all of us, all of us hear from God. The problem is so many of us just don't listen. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you confident about your party, Michael? Oh, yeah, I'm confident about the party because I think there's a lot of good people out there we have to find who want to put this party back together, get back to its roots, and move it, move it forward. So I'm, I'm very confident about the party. Neil? Uh, no. Uh, frankly, I, I'm not. Uh, I was a little bit dismayed uh, with Congressman Shays, uh, you know, talking about, hey, you know, look, we, we have to maybe, what, embrace big government? No. I, want the, I want the Republican Party to focus on individual self-reliance, back to individualism, and, uh, and nurture the Americans who believe in themselves. America is great not because of government. It is great because of its people. We need a Republican Party that recognizes and, that. And the bottom line is this. If your sole objective is to have a smaller government and you forget about the environment, you forget about our economy, you forget about our problems overseas, that's not going to win it. That's my I, only point. I would submit to you that the problem with our economy right now is government. Well, I would jump in to add that I don't disagree with Neil, but I think that Republicans need to be able to tailor their message to the middle class economic anxiety that families are feeling, college tuition rate, rates going up. Uh, we have this $700 billion bailout, which, you know, a majority of the people didn't approve of, and Republicans were scattered and didn't know how to respond no, to I it. Gotta, Again, we go back, Republicans lost their way. They have to get back to the first okay. page and move forward. That's all what right, they guys, need to do. We'll have you all back quite a bit. Got lots of time. Thank you all very much. Sarah Palin is here tomorrow, and if you'd like me to ask her a question or have a comment, go to CNN.com slash Larry King, click on blog, and let us know.